historic Hampton Court Palace, set in some of the most graceful parkland and gardens in the world, sits by the River Thames not far outside London. For the second time, this home of kings lent its grace and land to an international flower show, whatever the locals thought. Nearly 800 exhibitors were attracted to what was one of the world's biggest flower exhibitions. This year they included the prestigious Royal National Rose Society, who co-sponsor the British Rose Festival, a premier show in the horticultural calendar. And for rose lovers there was a bounty of blooms to enjoy. The theme chosen for this year was International Rose, and the world's finest designers arranged the displays. The festival is now in its 14th year, and on each occasion, many new roses are launched and seen publicly for the first time. This year was no exception. Along with the spirit of competition that rose growing always brings, the main flower show included a range of floral experiences that have been staged for charity. It's not an aim of the show to raise money for charity, but what we do encourage is uh, charities or indeed any other organisation that would like to benefit from an involvement with a show of this type. And if by doing that they can raise money uh, to help people in need, then we are uh, extremely happy about that situation. Specially designed glasses allow spectators to experience something of the world of the blind in a garden sponsored by Action for the Blind. The effects of conditions such as cataracts and tunnel vision are simulated for the viewer. And they illustrate the need for strong colour, shape and texture in any garden designed for the partially sighted. Children's involvement in both charity work and design was also very much a feature at the show. The results of national competitions for specific types of gardens were created by experts in aid of Action Research, a medical research charity for children. This sensory garden with its specially raised beds incorporated the four senses, touch, smell, hearing, and vision. The winning designs in all sections were made by children under 15. This is the idea chosen by the judges for the secret garden especially for children. It was conjured up by an 11-year-old. Children have picked out particular features that they like in the garden. For example, in the secret garden, the idea was to have an area where they could get away from their parents and at the bottom of the garden, so they specified bamboo and, and plants that would actually shield the hut so that they could really play away in, in secret. A tunnel idea which created a garden within a garden was just one inventive feature in this design. It impressed the judges and won a seven-year-old the prize for the best play garden. And it didn't leave out any of the perennial delights of children's play. In a more serious vein, a plunging statue of the ill-fated Icarus was the centerpiece of the labyrinth of the sun. Around a pool measuring 1,991 centimetres in circumference, to mark the year of the maze, 22 tree trunks, each carved with a different image, depict an ancient sunrite. They represent 22 pillars from a sacred temple. In this area of the park, legend gave way to fantasy, the railway enthusiast's fantasy, where a love of trains and gardening can be indulged in unison. Exact replicas of engines and carriages brought back memories of a period when trains ran on time. 
And just in case any of the thousands of visitors became inspired on the site, there were plenty of commercial enterprises on hand to provide the materials. From the figurine statuary, to the myriad variety of potting plants, and the pots to put them in. From the essential element of every English backyard to a veritable mansion greenhouse big enough to cultivate the most exotic plants for any garden.